to jump right over Leave for a while to keep some composure You burned it all down with your bones all so cast Blame for the spark while charging suckers for the smoke Now it's up to your heart and I'm scared Good evening, good afternoon, and even good morning for some of you guys. Um, welcome to the Bose Pro webinar on choosing the L1 Pro system that's right for you. My name is Craig Small, product line manager uh, at Bose Pro for the L1 Pro portable systems. And I'm joined today by our special guest, singer-songwriter Will Daly, uh, world-renowned, but uh, a local treasure to us New Englanders. Will, Will has been featured on many TV shows that you've watched. Um, um, let's share the stage with Eddie Vedder, has played Farm Aid. Um, I can't believe that National Throat was released in 2014. That seems hard to believe. Uh, critically acclaimed National Throat, 10 million Spotify plays, uh, reached the top 20 on Billboard's Heat Seekers chart, recently released Golden Walker about a year ago, and just released Pattern of Destruction, a combination, compilation of really cool covers by Prince, Arcade Fire, Tom Waits, and others. Will was scheduled to have a really killer 2020, um, but global pandemic kind of crept up on us and appropriately, you know, sort of shut the world down. Um, however, Will has been very active in our local community as well as uh, nationally, um, doing some socially outdoor distant gigs um, and also working with us at Bose um, to, as part of our singer songwriter community or Bose user community, um, when developing the L1 Pro line of products, um, doing some really active fundraiser events such as the Isolation Tour, where he raised uh, about 26K for local Boston venues, hosting live online Q&A for Crossroads and Citizens Banks Live and Local, featuring Kay Hanley, Steel Gold, Dalton and the Sheriffs. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, Will Daly. How's it going, Will? Hi. How you doing? Nice to see you, Craig. It's going well. Um, I'm making do, and I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to talk about this this new product. I've been um, lucky enough to be involved with Bose for kind of a long time now. Started with the F1, and then the S1, and now this this new series. And each um, each new development, each new product, I am um, kind of inspired as a performer. By them. So thanks for having me. Thanks for being so supportive of my, of me and that wonderful cool. introduction. Awesome. Um, so Will has a, a very kind of a, a unique perspective in that he has sort of worked with us throughout the development of each of the systems. Um, he has experience with legacy L1 products, so he has a, an, a, a good lens to compare legacy L1 with L1 Pro. Um, also utilized the S1 in lots of gigs, as well as helped us with some artists um, feedback on that product as well. So today we're going to talk about choosing the L1 system that is right for you. Um, the L1 Pro system is a full line of new portable line arrays. Um, we invented, Bose invented the portable line array 17 years ago with the original, what we now call the Model 1, sort of a game changer in terms of form factor, um, portability, and also just filling rooms um, with sound. With uh, It's just amazing 180 degree horizontal coverage pattern and really tight vertical patterns. Um, so we are gonna kind of dive in. Uh, we had a product announcement on October 27th where the L1 Pro 8 became available for sale. Um, so the L1 Pro 8 
We've got eight drivers in the mid-high array and a seven by 13 inch racetrack. Um, this is our replacement for the L1 Compact. Although the L1 Compact will remain in the line for the foreseeable future, uh, the L1 Pro 8 is in fact the new and improved L1 Compact. The L1 Pro 16 uh, will start shipping to customers this week uh, as they just became available in our distribution centers. This has uh, 16 drivers in the mid-high array, <clears throat> as well as a 10 by 18 inch racetrack driver. So sort of the big brother to the L1 Pro 8 um, in the same form factor. This is a replacement essentially for the L1 Pro S, uh, sorry, the L1 Model S with a B1 base module, um, yet still super portable. And then we've got the L1 Pro 32, which has uh, 32 drivers in the mid-high array. This is our flagship portable line array. Um, this gets paired with a sub one or sub two powered base module, um, floor to ceiling um, articulated line array drivers. This is our replacement for the L1 Model 2, which had 24 drivers. Uh, remarkable improvements in um, sonic quality, in uh, SPL and bandwidth, and also portability. We've made the L1 Pro 32 60% lighter than Model 2, so that's kind of remarkable. Um, powered with, paired with the powered sub one and sub two uh, powered base modules. And then also all three of those line arrays um, for our total systems can be operated with the L1 Mix app, which is a control application for the IO. Um, so we'll get into a little bit more details a little bit later on what's on that IO. So um, coverage patterns vary slightly um, from system to system. The L1 Pro 8 with its C-shaped line array uh, gives us about 40 degrees of a, of a sonic beam, uh, plus or minus 20 degrees. Um, with its eight articulated drivers in the C-shape, we've got 120 dB continuous SPL and 118 dB peak SPL. Uh, 280 total watts, very efficient total watts, class D amplification. The uh, Pro 16 has a what we call a J-shaped line array with 16 drivers in the mid-high array. Um, this, um, as you can see, is good for elevated stages as it fires down as well as on the floor with that tight top vertical control. Um, quite a bit louder than the Pro 8 at 118 dB continuous and 124 dB peak SPL. Uh, that system is 1250 total watts for combined with the mid-high array as well as the as the subwoofer. And then the L1 Pro 32 is a really tight um, straight line array with tight vertical control on top and the bottom, roughly zero degrees, um, ideal for short stages as well as being on the floor. Um, and I'll touch more on this in a little bit, but because of there's so many uh, drivers in that in that line array, the uh, drop-off over distance is truly remarkable. It's able to fill some really really large spaces as well as ideal for outdoor venues um, or outdoor spaces, which um, are sort of the only gigs we can get these days. Um, 122 dB continuous, 128 dB peak when paired with a sub one. And then with the sub two, we've got 117, sorry, that was sub two. With sub one was 117 dB and 123 dB peak SPL. So, and then all those of course, featuring our 180 degrees of horizontal coverage, So all three systems feature the same onboard mixer. Um, you can see here from left to right, we've got the L1 Pro 8, the L1 Pro 16, and the L1 Pro 32. Um, a little bit closer, we've got uh, three channels with a clear channel delineation. And kind of the main control of the IO panel is the rotary encoder, which is a push button. So rather than have separate knobs for volume, treble, bass, and reverb, you simply press those rotary encoders and it allows us to select each parameter. Um, there's also an LED ring around those knobs to indicate your position. We've got channel mutes. We've got default tone match presets on channels one and two for handheld dynamic mic, as well as piezo acoustic guitar. We've got combo input jacks with phantom power on channels one and two. Channel three is our auxiliary or Bluetooth streaming system. So we've got the Bluetooth connection as well as a 3.5 millimeter stereo summed and a quarter inch mono as well. So you could connect the keyboard to this channel if you wanted to. And then we've got a system EQ, which is a, an EQ that optimizes for live performance, for uh, recorded music if you're a mobile DJ, and also for public speaking. This is an EQ that gets placed over the, the, uh, the master. We've got a USB service port for line out, uh, sorry, for making firmware upgrades. And then we also have a line out, uh, full balanced XLR line out. 
And then we have a tone match port for powering a T4 or T8 tone match mixer. And everything you can do on the products um, IO panel wise, you can also do in L1 mix, uh, in addition to other features such as uh, selecting from our tone match library of presets, saving scenes as well. So before users make a purchase of an L1 Pro 8, we it really kind of we kind of drill it down to um, three sort of qualifying questions. Uh, the first being how big are the spaces you'll be playing? What types of audio sources are you going to be connected to? And then what do you value most, uh, performance or portability? While everything is, we we love the performance of everything. Um, they they they're also really portable systems as well. Um, so take those in, into consideration. So number one, how big are the spaces you'll be playing? Um, so spaces meaning ranging from coffee shops, cafes, um, clubs, bars, and also outdoor spaces. And Will, you've had a chance to, to use um, all the, the new L1 Pro systems as well as legacy systems. Um, what are your thoughts on um, choosing a system based on the space that you're playing? Right, I mean, the first time I heard the eight, uh, even when it was not fully finished yet, I thought this is amazing, one of the more powerful um, speakers I've heard, uh, and that was just the eight. Um, so it, it is very powerful. I think a lot of people who are familiar with the S1 were impressed with the power. Um, I played a gig with the eight, and I didn't need anything else. I wasn't lacking. It was a um, house concert type vibe on a back porch. Um, I could have added another person to that. I could add another mic. I could add another second guitar with me. Um, and it would have been fine around that size audience. And also the L8 makes the, will make the best home Bluetooth speaker you have. And it could, <laughs> the compactness, like Craig is saying, um, it just unpacking it up, moving it around, but then just sitting here in my, my home studio, I didn't feel like it was in my way or anything. And I just left it up and then I just played music through it through the whole time. And then L16, I used in a larger back room uh, concert this summer. And the only problem I had with it was that everyone was commenting on how good it sounded. And no, I was like, wait, but did you like the show? <laughs> uh, it, really, it, it really made an impression. To, nobody knew that I was using a brand new piece of Bose equipment. Um, I didn't announce it or anything and everyone was commenting on how it sounded. And that was to a larger giant backyard that kind of went and went and went. And I was still solo. And again, I could have, with, with the L16, I would have, I would have gone um, to like a folk trio with it, easily DJ with it. Um, I also would have used a 16 if I am playing in a trio element and I don't need to run the drums through that. I'm just using vocals. Um, and then, of course, the, the 32 I used for a Halloween party recently. And I don't know. I, I worry about the person who's ever going to have to push that to where it goes. There's no knowing where that where the end is for that so, as far as volume and coverage. Um, the footprint it has on stage mixed with if you're a wedding band and you're a pro wedding band. Like you see so many wedding bands with the L1 legacies and they're astonishing. Um, the footprint on this is just a huge evolution for those type of bands and a stereo pair of L32s would be um, a game changer for that, that professional band. Um, By footprint, you mean like literally the, the physical space that it's taking up? Stage, um, Cause I, I've had the legacy, I've had the legacy for five, six years, used it in all kinds of scenarios, always powerful always brings, um, everyone always comments on it. The performers that I put on stage with it, I run a series on, at Fenway Park in Boston where I put bands on the roof deck of Fenway Park and um, and it covers 300 people easily and shoots into the park. And that's the, that's the legacy. And the, this new one is, um, it would seem how, how, how those kind of, improved upon their own model, but it really just uh, is stunning and has a lot more what I'll call headroom in 
and you and even though it's really really loud and covers all that area it can go a lot louder especially for the, for the dj and and when i'm loading out with the 32 like the like the 8 and the 16 but really with the, the 32 i'm thinking i loaded the other day with an s1 in the backpack on my back and the subwoofer in my right hand and the rest of the 32 in my left hand and i got to my car and i thought i really have to do that idiot check like Am I leaving the cable? Am I leaving the cable? This shouldn't have been that easy. Uh, and I'm not I'm not exaggerating that. It kind of makes you kind of if you're a performer and you're used to gigging all the time, it makes you think it shouldn't be this this simple. Yeah, with the, the 32, you really can um, carry the whole system in a single trip from, from the vehicle to the venue and then from the venue back to the vehicle. Whereas a, a model two with a B2, um, that you have to have some pretty strong hands. It's pretty much impossible to, to physically carry all those four pieces in a single trip. Um, but we'll touch a little bit more on the portability aspect in a bit. Um, we're looking at right now um, what we call throw over distance. Um, and this is a chart really just to show you how well the sound propagates per system. Um, because these are, are line source versus a point source, uh, a point source normally will uh, uh, sort of reduce um, reduces 6 dB of sound um, every time you double the distance um, because these are line sources which propagate sound more efficiently um, as a collection of engineered line array speakers together. Um, particularly with the Pro 32, we actually cut that in half. So we're, um, it, we're losing only 3 dB per doubling of distance. So as you can see here, looking at the Pro 8, um, you're talking about rooms that are, um, you can reach comfortably um, you can see the the chart, the graph all the way over to the right where we say poor and optimal in, in terms of intelligibility. Um, rooms that are, you know, appro approaching like 55, 55, 60 feet ish. Pro 16 um, with the more drivers in the line array, um, as well as the more power. Um, we're talking about rooms that are um, over 100 feet. And then the Pro 32, which as I keep saying this remarkable drop off over distance, um, uh, really you're over 200 feet here before you're hearing any sort of in the um, intelligibility loss in terms of an L1 Pro 32 system. Um, they also they also functioning as a, as a line array, um, a point source speaker, it's really like um, in order to carry to the back of the room, it really has to be kind of screaming at that point source. Um, and then when you have that 6 dB loss per doubling of distance, that means that if you're standing next to it, um, it's really loud. It's really difficult to have a conversation um, as opposed to like a, a line source. The, the difference in volume is is not necessarily that much greater when you're standing right next to the system versus when you're, uh, you know, 10 feet away, 20 feet away. Um, this in your DJ experience, Will, with the, uh, the Pro 32 for your October, uh, your Halloween event, people coming up to you and talking to you like right there next to the array. Yeah, but it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't different. It's, I'm, I'm usually, you know, it's right next to me, but I'm a couple, about a foot back behind it and I could still make it out. It's, it's going straight out. So. Cool. So, um, consideration for, uh, what, how big the rooms that you're going to be playing. Um, if you, uh, if you know for sure that you're gonna be playing smaller rooms, the Pro 8 probably makes most sense for you. If you're not sure, you're gonna be playing small to medium-sized venues. Pro 16 um, gives you the opportunity to, to fill those large rooms with spaces. And then the Pro 32 can also fill those small spaces, but has the opportunity to, to fill really large spaces as well. Yeah, uh, and then just- Yeah, I'll just add that the, the 8 really tells you, if you're, if you're a solo performer and you're doing house concerts, and you're having some solo gigs and you need that with you it's perfect if you think you might need to scale into like rehearsing with your band and having some vocals go through it then the 16 is ready for you kind of kind of thing and, and you'll know what type of gigs that you're doing cool um and then just we we looked at the slide earlier just a reminder of that coverage pattern so um why does the c-shape matter a c-shape matters if you're going to be on elevated stages if you're going to be on the floor, it also gives you the opportunity for raked seating, um, albeit you know a smaller venue with with raked seating. Um, the Pro 16 
would be for elevated stages as well as being on the floor, not ideal for rake seating. Um, and then the Pro 32 for slightly elevated stages, you don't want to get that that beam out of sort of the main, you know, your torso through your head, main kind of sweet spot listening area. Um, so those also go into consideration when selecting which kind of system is right for you. Uh, next is uh, the question is what types of audio sources will be connected? And why does this matter? Um, if I just skip ahead to the next slide here. Um, we have singer songwriters, we've got uh, acoustic duos and trios, we've got mobile DJs, we've got bands, um, we've got public speaking events. Um, some of those instances, like if you're um, just plugging an acoustic guitar into a, into a vocal microphone, um, any one of the systems will work for you. But when you get into use cases where you're going to be, let's say, miking a, a drum set, miking a kick drum, um, probably in a Pro 16 or the Pro 32 with the Sub 2, they're going to be better for you because you're going to be able to hear the thump of that kick, um, as well as uh, maybe playing bass guitar um, through that device. Um, keyboard, like left-handed keyboard parts, really want them to kind of have that thump. Maybe you're maybe you'd want to optimize with an L1 Pro 16. Um, you you will, in particular, you're really good at scaling up or scaling down your gigs based on uh, the venue or uh, sort of the context of the gig. Um, any comments on uh, what you're connecting to the L1 Pro system um, has a lot to do with which one you should choose. Absolutely. Um, and you kind of said it with the, with the low end, and I would also say the amount of vocals you're going to have. And um, the low end, the 16 can handle your kick jump. It can handle your left hand on the keyboards or your bass guitar. But you'll know if, if your ensemble or the, the gigs that you're going to be doing frequently are going to have a kick, the keyboard, and the bass, then you know you got to go up to the 32 um, just to represent your sound and, and have that, um, that space to, with, with those subwoofers. For the low end, yeah, you're gonna you're also gonna need the output to be able to compete with an acoustic drum set yeah. as well. Um, like if you're doing rehearsal, uh, you've got a, a PA in your rehearsal space and you're running all your vocals through it. Um, and we should also acknowledge that this could also involve a T4 or T8 mixer, like you yeah. said, if you're like a full band with a couple of Pro 32s and sub ones or sub twos. Yeah, um, you got a lot going through that system. But the, the the low end on the 16 is is nasty. It's amazing, and you can. I've uh, done Bluetooth tracks and played along acoustic to the low end Bluetooth track going through the 16. Um, you, it's an amazing system just for DJ too. But it really comes down to the size of your band. Yeah, um, as it pertains to uh, like DJing, there's you know lots of a lot of music has some really low content that you can't actually hear unless you've got a box that's tuned low enough to kind of replicate it. Um, so you would hear a difference with with the Sub 2 versus a, a Pro 16, for example. Even though the Pro 16 utilizes that same 10 by 18 inch racetrack driver and it's got tons of thump and it's it goes pretty low, um, there are some things that you wouldn't be able to hear in that that you can hear with the, with the Sub 2. Yeah, yeah, the stuff that kind of breaks your bones apart a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. So, um, but, uh, but I, you know, I, I didn't get to play with a full trio yet on the 16. I played duo with the 16 and I played a bass guitar through the 16. And I can't, I would, I would love to play a gig where you're playing in that 75 person range and you have a great drummer who knows their space and maybe the kick drum's flying through it. Um, and that's the only thing, a kick drum or an overhead mic. And then you have your vocal going through it and you have a guitar amp and a bass amp. And that would be, that would be stunning on 16 for that, for that type of, you know, Americana, rock, folk, trio. Um, it could really work. Yeah. And I should add that the, uh, like the crossover point on all these systems is uh, 200 Hertz. Uh, the compact was a little higher at 400 Hertz. Um, so we kind of brought the Pro 8 in line with the rest of the family. Um, and what that does is it lets your kick drum or your bass guitar, left-hand keyboard parts that we've been talking about, 
kind of emanate from where it needs to emanate from, from the subwoofer. And everything else just kind of stays up in the mid-high array, vocals, guitars, um, the airy keyboard parts, horns, strings. Um, and we always say, like, uh, we always refer to vocal clarity uh, in our, as we, in our marketing speak about these systems. And that's, that's really one of the keys to the vocal clarity is, is allowing the vocals to come from where they need to come from, not bleeding down into the subwoofer. Um, and in, in addition to vocal clarity, you also get this really great separation of the instruments. Like you can hear everything that's, everything that's connected to the system, whether it's recorded music or um, a trio or a duo. Yeah, it comes out, it's like it comes out mixed for you. It's really, it's really fascinating. Cool. Um, all right. So just sort of acknowledging, you know, many audio sources that are going to be plugged into your L1 Pro system. There's, there are many other things that you could connect to it, of course. Um, and then the third question is um, not necessarily an either or. It could be a gig per gig situation. But um, to, if for making your purchase, do you value most performance or portability? Um, and I should clarify that, again, the performance of all these systems is great, and the portability of all these systems is great. However, um, when you start with now one Pro 8, um, as you go up the family line, we are improving the performance. You're getting more SPL, more bandwidth, um, and performance and portability don't necessarily work hand in hand. So, um, as you, if you were to start with an L1 Pro 32, even though it is super portable with the sub two, um, as you go down the line, that is uh, ultimately just a more portable system. And you can see here in these graphics, um, just sort of the, the scale for, um, as we go from left to right, we're improving our performance. And as we go from right to left, we are improving our portability. And just kind of the, um, I was gonna say remarkable, but the, just the, these things are, are remarkably light. There, I said it, remarkable. Um, that um, it's every single one of these systems is a simple carry from your vehicle to the venue and then and then back again. Like when you were talking, Will, you, you did the dummy check, like, oh, shoot, did I forget something? Yeah. Um, it, we were we were really um, conscious of of making those um, portability improvements. Um, with the L1 Pro 32, for example, um, those drivers are those are just under two inch in diameter as opposed to the two and a quarter drivers in the Model 2. Um, Model 2 is, it's a super portable system, but it's it's not a light system, you know. Um, the L1 Pro 32 in total is 30, sorry, 60% lighter than a Model 2. It, it's it's shocking. You're yeah. saying, you're say, just to say, what it, it's shockingly light. <laughs> I, just to cut all, it's, it's portability. Portability is not an issue across the line now. It's just a matter of what sound you need. Because portability, it's not. It's not an issue. I, I don't think on any of it. Like even loading up the 32 into my car doesn't feel all that much different. And the subs there, it's a little bit more, but it's like a. Just the compactness of the sub is is, is simpler and easier and, and lighter. Um, so for me, it's not even um, something to to worry about or consider. You just you. As it should be, you just have to worry about your sound now and what you want. So, like as it pertains to uh, making this buying decision, right? Like, if you are, um, um, you've got a small vehicle, you can't maybe you can't fit a sub two and a Pro thirty two, so you could gravitate towards the Pro sixteen if you're a mobile DJ. Um, some of the folks in our DJ community, they they live in the city and they they've got a three story walk up apartment, so. Um, and you don't leave gear in, the, in your car overnight, you gotta bring it all up. So portability is definitely uh, a major factor in um, which, you know, buying, uh, making buying decisions uh, for your L1 Pro system. Yeah, and you're one trip with the system. It's a one trip to the, to the vehicle. It's one trip into the venue, one trip up the stairs. Yeah. And um, I don't have a slide to highlight these, but, uh, we have some new accessories that, um, so currently the, the what's considered a two-handed carry, right? You've got your, your Pro 16 um, subwoofer slash power stand in one hand, and you've got a carry bag with the, the array and the extension in another hand. So you've got two, two hands, still a single trip. Maybe your guitar is over your shoulder, 
walking into the venue. Um, we're making a, uh, um, a system a system carry bag for the for every, each one of the systems that allow you to put the the power stand as well as the array and extension into a single vessel. So literally, it's a it then becomes a one handed carry. Um, so taking even though we've made portability improvements, we're also trying to deliver better kind of vessels for users to uh, transport to and from your vehicle to the venue. Um, what are your thoughts on, so we're not highlighting it here, but one of the big portability stories is the use of the racetrack um, because we can just super quick description. If you, if you consider a round driver and you grab the top and the bottom and you pull that, um, you just kind of stretch it out while keeping the same similar surface area. Um, what we've done is we, we can put this racetrack driver in a, in a taller and slimmer package um, that just means a better center of gravity. So it's easier to carry. Um, it fits in smaller spaces and it takes up less space on stage. What talk us through like your um, so you you've been we've been talking to you for a while, but you were there when we kind of made the leap to racetrack drivers. Um, what were your concerns? And then um, or how do you feel about the results? Um, my first thought is this some sort of black magic. Uh, sorcery that I, you know, don't will never understand, and I guess the answer is yes. Like I don't, I don't necessarily understand how that works so seamlessly and beautifully. Um, it, uh, but it makes such a huge difference again with the the stage footprint because I'm I am the performer, so I'm always kind of thinking of those things. Like I need it to sound good, of course. But uh, if I'm going to trip over something on stage or I lose a lot of my footprint to move around or communicate with my, the other people on stage, um, that plays into how I feel about whatever it is I'm using. And also the sight lines, like, it's, you know, as, as with the L1 series, the sight lines always been amazing to your audience because your main job is to connect. And I feel like this, as far as subwoofers go and their size and, and they're cumbersome, uh, on stage to carry to move around the racetrack driver however you did it however it was done um, sounds tight it doesn't sound like that false low end that we hear in so many products and headphones where it's boosted or it's false or it's made to sound a little wider when it shouldn't be or too tight when it shouldn't be it just sounds natural and realistic i guess that's redundant natural and realistic but um and then again, you're walking. You're walking to your car with this thing. It's lighter than the, than on the Legacy, and it just sits by your body better. And after you have worked hard all night, and you have to talk to everyone afterwards, maybe you have to pack up and all this stuff. You, you're carrying this thing that just kind of sits at your side a little better as you're walking, which makes a big difference at the end of the night, and um, slips into your car nice and easy, more easily. So you you can you can improve upon your post show pleasantries with your fans because you know it's exactly. less work to get exactly. into the vehicle. Yeah, my pack up time with the thirty two was about half the time with even the legacy, and and like I said, one trip to the car. So, um, yeah, cool, awesome. That's heavy anecdotal stuff. It's the stuff that matters, though, really, when you're, when you're working all night. It does matter, yeah. I mean, not to keep throwing praise your way, but um, we, we work with Will because not only is he super talented, but he's got a great ear, and he, he gives very good feedback. And he's also, he is a user. He's a working musician who um, has very valid feedback as it applies to how it sounds, how the I.O. panel is laid out, um, and how portable it is. So um, it does matter, definitely. So um, trying to avoid saying in a nutshell, um, because it's not really in a nutshell, but um, any type of user could use any type of system. It's just a matter of picking the things that are most important to you. Um, as some examples, um, I'm just gonna kind of prime the, the viewers here with some suggested types of users that would probably gravitate towards an L1 Pro 8, for example, um, a solo acoustic performer, typically playing smaller spaces, a DJ 
could use this um, just as a monitor system if they've got like a massive system that they're throwing out onto the dance floor. Usually DJs like an actual monitor system as opposed to just headphones. Um, L1 Pro 8 is great for that. Um, sometimes DJs have like two systems going. If, if it's a wedding, you've got like the main kind of reception area and then maybe you've got a cocktail party going on at the bar. Um, so an L1 Pro 8 is great for that. Um, also great for public speaking. Um, super easy to operate, um, super portable. We've, we've talked about that. Uh, in a, in a, I said it again, in a nutshell. In another nutshell, inside the other nutshell, um, this is the user that um, they value portability. Um, but also don't have to sacrifice performance, really. Um, and then there's just a little bit more detail here of some of the, the specs. Um, you can see the low frequency. Um, here's reiterating the SPL. And the low frequency were tuned down to 45 hertz. Um, the compact was 65 hertz, just for reference. So you can go quite a bit lower with this system. And then the Pro 16, um, this is probably the one that you've had the least experience with. Is that right, Will? Yeah, I did, I did one gig with it. Yeah, okay. And it was solo. So um, as opposed to the 1S, which was the little brother to the Model 2, the Pro 16 is the big brother to the Pro 8. Same form factor. Um, we've got the inter fully integrated subwoofer. This user um, also values portability, but the performance is, is a little bit more um, top of mind to them as well. Um, so could also be used by a solo performer, um, big enough to handle a duo um, for medium out and outdoor venues, small to medium and outdoor venues. Great for a mobile DJ system. Two of these um, next to a DJ table with a DJ mixer in the middle is amazing. Uh, band, rehearse, band vocals in a rehearsal space. Um, again, as we talked about before, being able to keep um, keep up with those acoustic drums and um, guitar players who always play too loud. Um, and then the just some of the specs over here. The uh, we're, this goes down to 42 hertz, so you can see why this might be a little bit more ideal for mobile DJs. Uh, and then this is sort of a kind of a quandary. A lot of folks ask us like. Pro 32 with a sub one or Pro 32 with a sub two, what's what's really the difference? The main difference is that um, they're both the, the flagship portable line array, um, the Pro 32, um, but the sub one is for the, the the user who just values portability a little bit more than they value, than they value total output and low end. Um, we still go down to 40 Hertz with the sub one with that same, seven by 13 inch racetrack that is in the Pro 8, um, but it doesn't go quite as low as the uh, Pro 32. So, I'm sorry, as the sub two. So this is great for a solo acoustic performer that wants just like, they value premium audio. Um, great for duos as well, trios, small to large spaces. Um, mobile DJ could totally use this system. Bands could totally use this system. And another thing that, the Pro 32 with the sub one or sub two gives you the option is uh, cardioid, where you can position two, you can stack two sub ones or two sub twos in uh, one rear firing and one front firing, activate cardioid mode, and you have directional bass. Um, for those of you who haven't seen a lot of our marketing materials, uh, low frequencies, let's say sub 200 hertz, these are these are omnidirectional. So if you're if you're standing behind a single subwoofer, you're gonna hear pretty much the same thing as people who are standing in front of the subwoofer. But if I have a cardioid stack, that one rear firing and another front firing, and I activate cardioid mode, I'm gonna negate that rear firing energy by, by 10 dB, um, which is a huge difference. You, I'm sure you will have had those gigs where mm -hmm. you just got that annoying low hum that um, the sound person, for whatever reason, just can't, can't mm -hmm. solve. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's so basically you have, you can keep elevating your sound with all these. Um, like I said, for that super pro wedding band, I keep thinking of my friends who have this really far out wedding band called the Prenups. And they, um, they, you know, constantly you're putting all these weird spaces 
as as a wedding band and you need to have some versatility so that setup allows that so you don't walk into you're playing somebody's barn in a field for a wedding and you're in the corner but you can then direct the low end to not get overwhelmed and everyone can hear each other on stage i love the prenups yeah uh so and so lastly the pro 32 with a sub two um so this this user um, wants to be covered. They want the most volume and the most low end, um, and they value just premium premium audio um, and that maximum low end extension, as well as that uh, modularity aspect we talked about, um, where you can you can add a second sub, you can put the sub in cardioid mode. Um, ideal for mobile DJs because we've got the the sub two is tuned down to thirty seven hertz, so there's some low low end content that really just kind of jumps out at you um, that you just can't hear in other systems. Um, kind of makes the hair on your arm stand up. Can also be used by a solo performer in really large spaces, duos and trios, uh, medium to large spaces as well as outdoor venues. That, um, that long throw over distance, um, as you mentioned, will really just, when you're in outdoor spaces, um, sometimes outdoor, that's where sound just goes to die because it just travels in a straight line. Um, but these systems, particularly the L1 Pro 32, is great outdoors, really works well. Um, good for bands and then the cardioid position, as I as I mentioned. You had this system probably the longest, mm -hmm. did you not, Will? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I used it in a performance slash DJ setting for a large party that was outside, um, people in costumes and stuff like that. And um, the, the ease of going in between, I played electric guitar through it. Um, vocals, I had two vocals going. And um, the ease of having like a, a DJ set up just with my phone, going Bluetooth to it, then jumping to a performance and both having the power and, and Meeting, meeting the needs of the event was was pretty seamless. But you know, as as can happen, like the, the worry is that if you are in a kind of gig where maybe you are having like the downtime music is DJ, and it's really um, loud and has a lot of low end in the track, and then you got to go up and play solo or something. Um, it just wasn't a problem with this because. I think first of all, I played I played electric on purpose because I could knew I could carry some of that some weight with the electric guitar through the 32. And did you go in through a modeler? Or yeah, I went, yeah, I went through the Strymon modeler that they just released in my pedal board. And um, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing setup, and it's just so easy in this kind of thing. It's like I said, I put all those pedals and those cables in my S1 backpack, and the only other thing I have to do is grab my guitar. Um, if I really wanted to, be, like, power through, I could have just strapped the guitar to the front of my body and it would have been fine. Um, but uh, the 32 kind of just kept me wider and um, had a lot of like the character and the tone that I would want for my electric uh, and that solo type of gig to kind of carry and like keep the party moving and the show moving from those breaks with DJs and you know the dynamicness of tracks that I was playing. In a in a post-COVID world, do you see, um, like, like modeling has come a long way, like in the last five, six years, right? You know, it's not our the Line Six spiders, right? No offense to Line Six, but um, that was a, you know, it was not necessarily pro audio. There's some really great stuff out there, the, the Strymon and the, the Kempers and the, the Helixes. Um, do you see yourself using? Um, an L1 Pro system with a modeler um, and no guitar amp and gigs moving forward? Pretty much. I mean, I would have I would have trouble with some of the amps that I was getting in rentals and tours like overseas. So I was always looking for something, but I wasn't going to just buy something to get through a gig. But I really love this modeler. And I have used S1s and F1s and the legacy L1 in Europe on tours because a lot of places will be going to a rock club and the next day we'll be playing like this outdoor square and we we learned quickly to take responsibility for our own sound so we've always traveled with 
either the F1 or the L1. And uh, so those modelers and stuff like that, just e again, transportation, ease of use, I think as the economics of music change, you look for gear that is going to make sure you are authentically representing yourself first and foremost in your tone, in your vision. But then you have to prepare for the travel that is needed and the cost of putting on your show. And sometimes as, as the business shifts, uh, we have to make adjustments. And um, luckily there's enough gear coming, coming to the market now that, that can do that for the creative. And you'll have your chance. <laughs> yeah. We will come back. We'll be back. Yeah. We will. Um, we will. Yes. I think that was cool because in the beginning, so in the beginning of COVID, I, a bunch of friends reached out to me <clears throat> about both stuff, and I, I drove everyone to getting an L1 Legacy, and they were, it made their summer, it saved their, you know, their income levels, and they were performing outside and doing all kinds of gigs and backyard gigs. And I think, um, I think next year in the spring, the summer was, it's really going to be heavily outdoor things and, and based on what can we do on, in the, on the fly. Uh, and then by this time next year, we'll be back in clubs and everything like that. So, you know, you guys, you guys came to the market right, right at the right time for this because, um, it's a time to yeah, be I think creative. We would bring in music to the people. I think we might owe you a commission on, uh, all the folks that you referred to, to us to use the L1 legacy systems. Well, I mean, um, uh, but honestly, I, I, on behalf of myself and or myself and everyone else that comes in, I, you know, I get to hang with all DJs and other musicians and songwriters and, and band leaders that you have in there. You guys really bring in working professionals and you listen to them. And that speaks a lot. And I think it shows in this product because I think more than any other portable uh, PA, and even you guys made a, a huge leap here um, that I don't hear. I don't know if this is a good thing, but I don't hear the product here. I hear the performance. I hear the performer and I hear the music. And like, I, like you were saying about how the voice comes out and it's clear, like it's built into the system. I, you, you hear the artist and you don't, you don't even think of the system that much. And you, Way you built it you can hardly see it now but you hear it and you feel it and that's what's most important and that's why um that's what we're all missing a lot of right now but um so i thank you for having me and having other professionals in there to be a part of it that's fantastic will thank you you should be in marketing that's really good stuff all right i'll do it i'll quit i'll quit music <laughs> um so i'm not sure if we're going to um, we're running up against the hour here. I'm not sure if the web's, the uh, live stream is just going to stop at seven. Um, I'm going to keep plugging away. Um, if we have time, we can do some, some question, answer some questions with a quick Q and A session. Um, this last page is just sort of like a, kind of like a fill in the blanks of all the other venues that we didn't really talk about. And really just to show, to highlight that concept that, um, any L1 system can work for any type of user. It just really depends on these specific types of, of gig requirements or gear requirements that you've got um, for entertainment, for education, for hospitality, for house of worship, uh, for business applications, and for fitness as well. Um, so there is, uh, there's an L1 Pro system out there for you. And with that, um, you want to answer some questions, Will? Let's do it. Cool. I'm just going to scroll through the uh, the chat here to see if there's any questions that popped up from some of the viewers. Um, how does stereo piano sam samples sound through each unit? This would be great for the solo and duo keyboardist as well. Um, well, these, each system is a mono system. So I can tell you that whatever is in that stereo file for information will be propagated through the mid-high array. Um, it's interesting when we first started listening to the L1 Pro systems, um, and this is 
mostly true for the legacy systems as well. When we listened to uh, recorded music in particular, that was obviously stereo, we were thought that we were hearing some of like sort of a stereo image, um, which is really just the articulation of those drivers um, and that 180 degree coverage just kind of almost gives you like this false stereo image. Um, so to answer this question, um, stereo piano will sound awesome. Um, if you really want stereo, then just get uh, two L1 Pro systems. Yeah, like Vince, Vince King asked, can you use two Pro 32s as front of house? And I mean, I'm, I'm dying to hear that. I, don't, I can't wait to hear a band play like that, but you can. Yes. Um, Tom Davis says, is the crossover 180 or 200? Um, the new smaller array speakers lead me to think this may be even 250. Um, if we, so these are, maybe maybe I already clarified this in what we were talking about earlier, but uh, uh, 200 hertz is the crossover point for all three mid-high array systems. Can an, Kevin Poppin asks, can an external sub be connected to the, to the Pro 8? Absolutely, can be connected to the Pro 8. Um, so we didn't talk in detail about subs and their submatch connection. Uh, submatch is a proprietary. Um, I encourage you to go to our website and watch the L1 Pro 32 or the sub videos or all the videos to get some more detail on submatch. It's a proprietary connection that delivers voltage from the wall as well as digital audio to the sub two. Because sub one and sub two need to be plugged into the wall, or they need they need power from the wall. Um, rather than have to plug another thing into the wall, we, we invented Submatch that just sort of helps optimize your cable management. Um, so when using it with a Pro 8, you don't have Submatch option because that's not on the Pro 8. You can just simply plug in an IEC cable, connect it to the wall outlet, and go full bandwidth line out. And then on the Pro 8, you simply select uh, low pass filter or the L1 setting. Uh, let's see. My Model 2 feeds back like crazy. I use, I also use my classics that never feed back. So I'm concerned with the articulated array of the Pro 32. So inherently, um, remember we talked about this not screaming volume as a technical term, screaming. Um, coming from the mid-high array when you're standing next to it. Um, that's sort of what gives us this relatively feedback resistant um, feature to the, the portable line arrays. However, with a system like the Pro 16, the Pro 32, and the Pro 8 to a certain extent, if you are close enough and, you're, and your EQ is just right and you're loud enough, um, you will hear feedback. Um, so. But I mean, what are your thoughts on um, feeding back? You've you've sunk into a Pro 32, Will? Yeah, um, I did not have any problems feeding back, but it really depends where you're placing it. And I get, I guess my answer for for that is, the, again, the footprint is so much smaller and um, workable. The system's workable. Even if its lightness helps you place it in a different spot. So if you're in a tight situation performing and you feel like the only place to put this system is a little bit over my shoulder or, or right next to me, you'll have more flexibility with the 8 and the 16 of moving it around. I, I didn't have a problem at all with feedback whatsoever. Good. Yeah. Placement is key. No yeah. question. Um, and I hope that answers uh, Matt Collins' question, which he asked, what's the feedback like on the Pro 16 versus the Compact? My L1 1S wasn't able to be next to me, um, but I can put the Compact right next to me. Um, that's, again, has a lot to do with placement, but the 1S is, is a um, considerably louder system than, than the, than the uh, Compact. But with the right placement, um, you should still be able to hear any, everything, use it as front of house, use it as a monitoring system and not feedback. We'll do, um, so 7.05, I think we started about 10 minutes late. So let's do, we'll do three more questions. 
And for those S1 users, like I have an S1 and I've used it plenty of times for small, um, small, small gigs and house concerts, a little bit of street performing, all that, that kind of stuff. I always carry it with me on the road too, in case like a monitor is really bad in the club or I have to do some sort of um, radio station thing where they don't have anything at all. But the S1 I've used, again, for that, that idea of it for a monitor with your eight, because you have to put the eight out in front of you and you want it to fly in a certain way or the 16 out in front of you, the S1 is just perfect for the monitor. Um, and since you brought up S1, I should mention that there is also, um, I say it's a secret crossover point, but uh, it's secret because it's not marked on the back of the sub one or sub two, but if you press and hold the line out EQ button on the sub one or sub two, um, it engages an optimized S1 Pro EQ um, at roughly, it's like 150, uh, 150 hertz. Um, this, you would go in through the line ins on the sub one or sub two, and then out to the S1. And basically it just, it uh, lets the sub do all the low end work. And then the S1 has, uh, doesn't have to work quite as hard. There are lots of S1 users out there. So pair your S1s with the sub one makes a, a uh, really nice little micro PA system. Um, let's see. Any questions jumping out at you, Will? I'm only able to see the same four questions. I don't even know how to use Facebook. I'm sorry. <laughs> it won't show me all the comments. Um, okay, a question about the T1. Um, can I use the, it looks like Tom Davis has actually responded to the other, uh, the other viewer's question. Um, the question is about the T1. Um, so the, all the L1 Pro systems will power a T4 or a T8. Legacy L1 products did not power a T8. You had to use the power supply. Um, Legacy L1 products, sorry, L1 Pro products will power a T1. However, the audio is disabled in a T1. That is because the architecture of a T1 is different than the architecture of the T4 and T8 and the, the DSP that we use in the, in the um, L1 Pro systems uh, is unfortunately not compatible with a T1. However, you can still go out through the analog outputs and still use your T1 if you're partial to that. Um, let's see if I can find one more question. Can I use the S1 piggybacked onto the Pro 32 with a sub two? Um, sure, you can actually with, that's kind of the, the scenario that you described well, like um, if you wanted to use the L1 Pro as, I'm sorry, the S1, if you wanted to keep your volume pretty high and the placement wasn't ideal to have it next to you, mm -hmm. you could go line out from the Pro 32 into your S1 and use that as your monitoring system. Mm -hmm. um, and then Joe, Joe Tunan says, would the Pro 16 or Pro 32 be the closer match to the Model 2 acoustic guitarist slash singer? Um, the L1 Pro 32 is the replacement for the Model 2. So if you're looking for that premium line array, um, straight uh, straight articulated line array with the, the tight top and bottom vertical control, then you'd want to use a, a Pro 32. Um, what the heck, we'll do one more as we are yeah. right at 710. Um, let's see. Pro 32 with sub two versus F1 stack. Um, so the F1 stack is, uh, that's, um, those are, that's a point source for better or for worse, even though we've got a little bit of a line array there, it's a, it's a point source. So it's gonna act like a, like a pole mounted speaker. Um, F1 is, is amazing. I know you've used F1s many times mm -hmm. as well. Um, it, just, it just does something different than a Pro 32. Um, it does not have 180 degree coverage, worth of coverage. Um, it's drop off over distance is 
uh, is sooner than a Pro 32. Um, however, it is louder. It's like 130 dB max SPL peak, I think. Um, so, so uh, I mean, the F1 is, are you putting on a concert and you have a front of house guy? Right. Good you point. Know, Pro 32 is, are you putting on a concert and you don't? <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and like like you're saying, the, the spread and the coverage of the 32 is is a lot different. Um, the uh, the F1 are you going to be that this audience is right in front of you, um, and that's that we're going to have all the time. Well, um, 32 could be the audience is right in front of you, but maybe the audience is scattered about. Um, I don't know, but that's just my that's my quick take on it. Yeah, with also with F1, you'd need a mixer. Um, as you alluded to with a front of house sound person, mm -hmm. um, there's no app control. So no sort of adjustments on the fly by the artist. Um, so there you go. Yep. Um, so we are 11 past the hour. Um, I want to thank you again very much, Will Daly, for joining us tonight. Thank you. Um, best of luck with everything. Any, uh, any gigs you want to mention coming up? I don't have any gigs coming up. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to the going to the cold winter. I'm going to start streaming again for my Facebook page if I can learn how to read Facebook comments again. And um, going to get in the studio a little bit this week. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, well, I'll, I'll plug your um, pattern of deconstruction, your last, Thanks. your latest release. Yeah. Um, as well as Nat, as uh, Golden Walker, uh, just a killer killer record. Thank you. And of course, National Throat. Thank you. Um, find him on at willdaily.com. Find him on Spotify. Find him on iTunes. Yeah. Um, everywhere there is music, you can find Will Daily. I will um, be there. Thank, cool. With an um, L1. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in tonight. Um, it was our pleasure to talk to you about the L1 Pro Systems. We hope to, to do this again. Um, take care, and we will see you soon.